Hello, we are at Serena Whitehaven showroom in Paseo de Gracia, Barcelona, talking to Barbara Muschietti, a film producer, writer as well. She's born in Buenos Aires, studied in LA and now living in Barcelona in, for the last 12 years. 12 years. She runs a production company, mainly focusing on advertising, but this year they have released um, a blockbuster, <laughs> a horror movie called Mama which has been a great success and I guess it opens many doors. Maybe the sequel? Well, the, the sequel happens with or without us, so I, I don't know if we can call that success, but um, Mama or Mama has opened many doors and uh, you know we're able to pitch our next projects to people that we wouldn't have been able to contact before, so it's it's great. Um, we're in a very good position right now. We're already uh, pitching our next project. We just did that in in Cannes. Uh, we had you know two days and did you know pitched like to twelve about twelve financiers, which was great. Um, we're trying to do our next film in a more independent structure. Mm -hmm. Um, because we want the goal is always to have as much creative freedom as of course as possible. So uh, it's been you know uh, it's been very fruitful, um, and I think we're very close to to getting the financing we need. Congratulations! Then. Thank you. <laughs> and how it's been the process of um, managing a 15 million euros movie as your first feature film? Well. <laughs> It's been fantastic. I, I mean, I, I have to say it. It's better than you know managing you know uh, a film that should have a budget of 15 million and you only have a million. So, you know, we were lucky. Uh, we worked very hard, and we had the support of people like Guillermo that helped us get. Uh, that financing helped us uh, get through doors that we wouldn't have been able to get through had we been completely alone. So we were very lucky. Um, with 15 million euros or 20 million dollars comes, you know, huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, smaller than if you have 200 million, but that's you know a different thing. Um, the structure was quite independent. Um, because it, it was a Spanish Canadian co production, and you know, we raised a lot of soft money, and then the, the rest of it came from advances on territories from, from our great distributor, Universal. So, we did have enough freedom, um, which, which was great. That said, you know, if you're working with a distributor and you want your film fully supported you need to talk to them and you need to listen to them and there has to be a dialogue. You can't just say, I'm gonna do whatever I want and then I'll show up with the movie and you know, hopefully they will do what needs to be done because that hopefully may not be so and, and then you're stuck with a movie on a shelf or that goes straight to VOD. So Obviously you succeeded in the whole thing. <laughs> well, you know, um, we did, uh, but we did because we worked hard at it. We, you know, we wanted our film to have a big marketing push. We wanted our film to be seen by as many people as possible. Um, so, you know, when the time came to work with, with the marketing team, we got really involved. The Universal Marketing Department loved the film and they helped us uh, push it uh, forward. So, it's great. Uh, while you were writing the script, you already knew you would become the producer. You want to, you were that in mind to produce it. Oh, of, of course, because I'm very anal, and I need to know that <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have some control over what I write. Of course, powerful. You know, woman, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when did you realize that you wanted to make movies in your life? Um, I think I don't know. I must have been five years old. You know, I was. Our parents would take us to the drive-in mm -hmm. all the time. Um, our parents loved movies as well, um, and it was always a common place for Andy and I to watch movies together. And it was, you know, I think some of the happiest memories of our childhood are associated with the drive-in or the movie theater or watching 
horror films on television, you know, it's something that was very close to, to us. But we were in Argentina, so um, until I put together the fact that I wanted to make movies, to the actual fact that I could indeed make movies, even mm -hmm. though I was a girl in Argentina, uh -huh. it took me a while, you know, it took me a while. And then I went um, to study in, in the U.S. and that's when I said, I can do this, you know, I, you know, I'll try at least. So. How was your choice for being a producer? Did you study production? Or? No, I never studied production. I did um, like a double major mm -hmm. in, in, in the U.S. You can do like two careers at the same time because you have a lot of classes in common. So I did communications. I was very interested in the theory of language um, and me the impact of media. And, and then film, I always studied as, you know, as my love, that's what I loved. But it was, you know, the part of film that I studied was more analysis and writing mm -hmm. more than, than producing. Produ production, I learned on the go. <laughs> I was always, you know, I was um, actually during university, I was reading scripts and making money, just making reports on the, script, the scripts mm -hmm. I would read. Um, but also in the you know in the summers I would al always PA um, or work in either commercials or film sets and you know always on, on the production side. I have I know this sounds strange, but I have no interest in being a director. I I like uh, to write and I like to produce the the middle stuff. You know, going on a van and no. Sorry, okay, but you had a very good training, <laughs> <laughs> practicing, yeah. real training. Yeah, I, would, I had training through, you know, blisters in my hands. I, you know, I swept floors in, you know, in stages. I, you know, I picked up dog poop from the dog's producer. I brought coffee. I picked up dry cleaning. I, I did everything, you know. I started, you know. And now is your turn for 20 or 50 million euros movies. <laughs> I hope so. But I'll never make anybody pick up my dog's poop. I'll, I pick it up myself, promise. So, uh, do you have any role model? Some inspiration in your career? Inspiration, yes. Inspiration is, um, is a little d different than role models. I mean, we, we grow and we meet people that have an impact on us. Uh, in, my, in my case, um, this may be a cliche, but my mom was fantastic because she always did uh, what she wanted without thinking, oh, I'm a woman or, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. Um, I had two very strong grandmothers, too, that always did what they wanted to do, regardless of what people thought. Um, but career-wise, when I was uh, 23, I, I met um, a producer uh, called Anna Gross um, in Los Angeles. Uh, she was in the office I worked at in Chicky Gori in Los Angeles and she was an amazing woman. She is an amazing woman, an amazing producer as well. Um, she worked with, you know, uh, De Laurentiis, with uh, mm. Sidney Pollack. She, I mean, an, an amazing, amazing, she worked in Constantine. Uh, with Bert Eichinger for about 12 years. I mean, th this is a woman that had an, an amazing career. And her view on life, uh, to me, was innovative and completely fantastic. And I, I, I'm still in, in touch with her. I, I still admire her very, very much. And um, that's the kind of woman I'd like to be, you know. <laughs> and uh, now that you're talking about women, do you think, um, as a woman, is it more difficult to be a film producer? No, I think it's easier because we have a brain that's much better <laughs> for producing than, than men's brains, you know. Men, they can't produce. Who did really. asking? I mean, I know I'm going to get, you know, slapped for saying this, but I think women are, are better producers, you know. A big part of, of 
of producing something is nurturing it so that it grows and I I, I don't think it's it's particularly hard for, for a woman. She only has to want it and she needs to be a, available to do it. I mean the one thing um, that sometimes is hard for women in, in producing is the availability. You know, of course. You have to be there 24 hours sometimes. So schedule wise you know, you have to think of what you want in life, you know, and what you want to achieve. Um, and you have to choose. That's, that's life. not, yeah. That's life, that's yeah. directing, but that's our whole life. Exactly. Choosing. So, what do you enjoy most in the movie making thing, I mean? In, in the movie making yeah. process? Probably pre-production. Oh, really? Pre-production is the best. I love it. I, I just love, because I'm a producer, so I love putting everything together. You know, that's, that's the best part. Shooting is hard and you're exhausted and, you know, you think every day how the hell you're going to get to the end of it, you know. Um, and then post-production for me is the hardest. Post-production is, is very tough because you face all your fears and you have to face all the things that you wanted to do and didn't it's hard but pre-production is is a lot of fun and then promoting the film is great I have fun uh, you know talking to people in the beginning then by the end you're like okay I've answered this question 52,000 times but uh, and you know in our case we didn't get to go to a lot of festivals because the goal was to to open the film, but the few festivals that we went to, it's great. You know, you're meeting filmmakers and you know, you're you're talking to people that really love film and that understand the difficulties you went through to make the film. You know, they don't just disregard it and say, oh well it's great or it's shit. You know, they, they, they understand and they ask, you know, how did you do this and how do you do so the real fun. contact with the audience. Yes. That's also very beautiful. Yes, it's it's great. So yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you. <laughs>